Um, so our fourth presentation today um, is between a partnership for, from two uh, Vancouver firms. So we have Design uh, and Environment and we have AppScoop. And they have uh, teamed up with uh, the Natural Resource Transformation Secretariat folks at uh, Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations. Um, so Design and Environment's aim is to solve problems using design and environmental science. Uh, they have their HQ here in Vancouver, but they also have offices in Montreal and Vienna. Uh, AppScoop is a development and consulting firm that delivers mobile and web solutions, and they have successfully delivered on a number of complex projects, ranging from, is that Christmas music? Wow. Oh, right, there we go. Thanks for that. Um, okay, so AppScoop is a development uh, consulting firm that delivers mobile and web solutions, and they've successfully delivered complex projects ranging from startup ideas all the way to enterprise software. Um, so I'd like to call on David Oswald from Design and Environment and Heather um, Remackle from Natural Resource Transformation Secretariat to come forward and present their project. Good morning, everyone. I'm Heather, and this is David. And uh, we are representing the startup culture and the government culture today. Um, a bit. Oh, sure, thank you. Thank you. I just moved back to Vancouver. I've been away. I'm from BC, and I moved to Montreal in 2005. <clears throat> and I moved back here to BC last year in October. So any chance I get to uh, rep Vancouver and, and rock and uh, this is an OG Canucks cap. So I mean, I took normally I have to wear a suit all the time. You know, going to the UN meetings and stuff. So I'm like I'm in my startup gear today. Yeah, we traded a little bit because I hang out with tech folks, and I usually wear red shoes that are not heels and jeans. So yeah, this is good. It's very good. And we've got our friends uh, at Scoop here, uh, Pav and Pulkit, who've been the development leads on this project, and they've done a fantastic job. So we've done a co-production, uh, basically. So we, DE, uh, we deal with content. We deal with tech stuff, mostly GIS-oriented work, and, and these guys are rock stars of uh, development, software development. So it's a very good partnership. And we're going to show, we, show you what we came up with. Yeah, so for the next five minutes, we're going to show you how we work together to solve a problem that government has generally around digital literacy. Now, you've seen some folks in the room here who have gotten up to speed on digital literacy through the STIR program, but that's not the case everywhere. We're starting to change that, so thanks to the team that are delivering this program. So our service delivery environment is changing. We have a rapidly changing world. We have shifting demographics and we have advancing technology. And government process structure, as you heard earlier, we're not always as responsive as we need to be and we need to adapt. So we need to learn how to adapt. So the good news is the BC Public Service, as you can see, is very motivated in this. Um, but we need a space really to get up to speed. And so we had the opportunity and it was really great to work with these guys to explore those solutions. What do we mean by digital literacy? This has actually been a tricky one when you start looking up digital literacy. How do I use Excel, I think, was one of the search results, right? Um, and how will it help us adapt? So what we've observed is that leaders around the world, particularly those like the government digital service in the UK, have started to really um, set a trend towards applying the culture, practices, processes, and technologies of the internet era. So folks in the internet era have had to quickly figure out how to work in this human-centered, technology-enabled future that we are building together. And so we are borrowing from those lessons. So you've heard people talk about agile today. Not everybody knows what that is, and we have to get our folks up to speed. So how do we get there? In talking to um, my colleagues in the public service within my own organization, the Natural Resource Transformation Secretariat, as well as learning conveners or people who are responsible for getting us up to speed from across the public service, we have Caitlin here today from Behavioral Insights. Um, these folks told us, you know what, we need a place to put this learning, this, this stuff. Um, so what they also said is that we need just-in-time learning that is trusted, easy to access, engaging, and applicable to the BC public service context. We also heard that the learning needs to be responsive in the sense that we don't know what we need to learn yet sometimes. So we actually have to be better at doing the education and our current offerings don't always get to be as responsive as we need them to be. So we worked with uh, AppScoop and Design and Environment, David Polkett and Pav, uh, or sorry, uh, 
Peter, to, uh, to design something. We're going to take a look. So pardon us while we uh, navigate to our digital academy on what this team is now calling Dingo. Yeah. So shall I switch? So in my role as an executive, which I am playing today, um, I set the vision and goals and drive towards performance in my organization. I've heard that digital capabilities can help me get there. I don't really know what that means. David, how can you help me understand this? Because I have limited time and attention. Exactly. Oh, oh, find the most. There you go. Boom. All right. Beautiful, there we go. So the Digital Academy on the Dingo platform will be the one-stop shop for high-quality, up-to-date content pertaining to digital innovation for government service delivery. Oh, okay. That sounds like it'll be easy to use and quite pleasant. Um, I need to support staff, though, to be able to collaborate with each other and to problem solve. So. I really need them to have relevant content, and I also need them to be able to find others to work with on this. I need other people who know this stuff. How are we going to do that? Well, we'll go back to the hub. So basically, this is the hub on the Dingo platform. And so the hub is where everything comes together. So it's a fairly simple functionality, but you can see there's three components here. So you can use the connect feature to seek out colleagues from across the, the government who, can off, who are offering knowledge and skills in digital innovation that may be useful for your projects. You can use here the groups function for starting up a working group on a certain digital innovation topic. Or if you see one that exists that looks interesting, you can jump on that. And then lastly here, you can use the dynamic feed functionality to pull up to the moment content pertaining to digital, in digital innovation, pertaining to your specific needs, right to, right to you. And if you want, you can share that content with your friends or colleagues using various social media channels. So the hub is, is a great place. It's a great way of, of connecting with other folks and then in getting up to speed right at that moment with the world of digital. Very cool. So I'm feeling better about my chances of getting up to speed here. Um, but now I really want to dig in, and I want to understand how I can lead this change towards better service delivery with these digital capabilities. So can you tell me how I can get that deeper understanding? And also, how can I trust this information? Good question. You're full of good questions. So these are modules. Okay, so we understand that there are people within your organization that have expertise and content that they can offer, but they need a place to put it, and they need a way to get it to you. So the modules, the Digital Academy modules, as you see down here, and there will be, we've got five of them so far, but there will be a whole slew of them, are learning experiences that are tailored to specific needs. So for example, you're an executive and you need to know about behavioral insights. Or you're an analyst and you need to apply that to practice. Right here, at, uh, behavioral insights for the executive or BI for the analyst. So all of these modules are custom designed by trusted people within the organization uh, and delivered to you quite easily. So if I go to one of these modules here, I'm gonna go to Agile for Executives. Okay, so we're still working on the look and feel for the modules at the module level. But for every module, before you dive in, you'll know what you're going to learn, why it's important, and how long you can expect to take to learn about that. So uh, this, is, this is really useful for those brief moments you have between meetings. You're an executive, you're busy, and you want to get speed with behavioral, uh, behavioral insights in five minutes. Boom. Go to Dingo. Go to the Digital Academy. Now, if you want to get dive deeper into one of the content areas and learn more, we've got the catalog. So the catalog is the Digital Academy's 
warehouse of content. So you can search and view. Here you can see some of the content that we've got loaded on here. You can search using a variety of criteria. This is documents, reports, websites, videos, podcasts. You can search and review them, and they're all guaranteed to be of high quality because they've been selected. So this is a big time saver, and it's a big reassurance because you know that if you're going to go and learn about behavioral insights, it's from your expert in behavioral insights in the ministry. Super. So it sounds like I'll actually be making use of this. I, I'm convinced I need this information. It's going to be easy for me to get, and I can trust it. So once I'm doing this learning, how can I keep track of what I've learned and maybe make this experience a little bit more personalized for me? Good question. So personalized learning. I'm particular. It's just yeah, a thing. Well, me too. So if you go to the profile here, there you are. You're already there using. I am. There it's for are. me. We've got you covered. So you can tailor your Digital Academy experience based on your own personal preferences. So it becomes your experience, your social media coming right to your interests. You can also create your own working repository of content that relates to your interests. So these are the main components. So these main components here, yeah, let's go back here. The modules, the catalog, the hub, and the profile are the main parts of our minimal viable product. And when used together, they meet the challenge that was originally pro proposed to us when we started the startup in residence. Great. Thank you so much for that demo, Dave. I'm, I'm very impressed with where we've gotten to in these short weeks, really, at the, at the end of it, and, and to our team here from AppScoop as well. And I, I just wanted to say that, um, for me, it was a brand new experience working with a team in this setting. So thank you to the program organizers for giving me the opportunity to apply Agile. I've actually been convinced to go and do some leadership training on this stuff now. So thank you for the push. And I wanted to also share, of course, the value to BC government and what we learned generally. Uh, so the drivers and opportunities to be digital, they're, they're out there, as I, as I mentioned and we've heard today from Minister Ralston as well. Um, we actually started being digital, as many of these other teams did, by using agile methodologies and being iterative and, and really touching, um, you know, getting in touch with users and understanding what is needed. Um, we co-created something we can build on. So we have a minimum viable product. We gave them plenty more ideas to work with, so they've got lots in the backlog, but you know, this is where we got to today. And next, we're going to start to trial the tool and the content with our users and understand more about what's going to help us get up to speed with our digital capabilities. So um, for us, uh, sorry. there we go. Uh, in terms of a, I'll speak for both of, of our companies, I thought it was a positive experience uh, co-creating with the government, because typically in our work anyway, and, and presumably in, <clears throat> in absolute work as well, it's you're working on contract. We do a lot of consulting work. So you go in, you do the work, get it done, da, da, da. where in this case, it's a different dynamic. You're co-creating something and you're generating a, a product that, that you, we own, like we'll use ideally in the future. So it was a good experience, it's a little different, but uh, we enjoyed it, and we enjoyed working with, with Heather and the team, and we had a good collaborative experience, I, I believe, and, and I think we've got a solid MVP. You know, it's, it's a solid, it's not crazy complicated, but it's clean, and that's what we stress from the, the, the get-go, keep it a clean, effective solution. We like the brand, Dingo, if you say, why is it Dingo? It's like, well, it sounds cool, you know. <laughs> it sounds better than Moodle, so. Uh, um, and, uh, and others like it. So, uh, but the, the one question is, is, does it have legs? So I don't know if any of you have worked in the, in the media business or the film business. Whenever you pitch a media project or film project, they're always going to come back at you and say, yeah, but this does have legs. You know, and meaning that means, does it have other additional applications? A book, multimedia, whatever, right? Well, uh, we thought about that, and we always think about how things might have legs, and uh, in this case, we looked to our current client base and said, well, can we use this in other places? And yes, there were ones that, that jumped out like right away, immediately. So I actually pitched this on Thursday morning to we work with the government of Trinidad. Uh, we do a lot of international work, and this is, we're working with them on ADRM, Agricultural Disaster Risk Management. We do consulting work on mostly GIS, but 
they don't communicate between ministries and share information and collaborate on a very, very serious issue in that country. So we discussed it on Thursday morning, and it looks like uh, we'll see if we can roll that into our existing works. It actually makes sense. In this case, we just wipe the look and feel, put on a new front end on it in terms of the look, and it becomes their system, another instance of Dingo. It will not be the Digital Academy, but it may be the Trinidad ADRM system, right? So, yeah, uh, we're, uh, we're thankful for the experience. We appreciate the time that the, uh, uh, the, the folks in, in, in the BC government have given us. And I'm very thankful for the work that uh, uh, Pav and Polkett have done. They've done a great job, and we're looking forward to next steps. Great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That, uh, that was great. Um, I was saying earlier uh, when Minister Ralston was here that uh, one of the reasons why I like this project so much is that um, this is about collaboration. The whole principle around startup and residence is, uh, is building those partnerships because everybody has their own unique uh, piece to bring to the table. Um, and in government, we know that we can get the outside perspectives and skills. Um, and this one takes that even one step further by, uh, by uh, design environment uh, partnering up with AppScoops. So it's been really neat to see this approach on, uh, on